Mega Glalie is out in Pokemon Go, so what a great opportunity to look at Mega Glalie as an ice type attacker and see what some of the top ice attackers in Pokemon Go are. So, you know what time it is. Welcome to the Trinity Club. Here we go! Welcome back everybody. Let's look at the top ice attackers in Pokemon Go, including Mega Glalie, which is officially out in Pokemon Go. So we're gonna do a quick snapshot of this Mega, and then we are going to move on to the top ice attackers in the game to get you familiar with what is best, because not only do we have the Mega Glalie coming out during this holiday season, we also have other things such as Swine Up. We have Avalug that's gonna be out there in the Bergmite brand new shiny release. If you guys do wanna see the tips, you can check them out up here. So let's get right into the video. And before I get into the video, I will be playing Calm Day in a Sousa, California. Thank you to Niantic and everybody that is going to be connecting me with the community. So I can't wait to be playing out in that area. So if you are in the California, I believe it's kind of like Western LA area, I will be out there this calm day. So hope to see you guys there. So let's start off with Mega Glalie. And if you guys do want timestamps because you're not interested in this specific Pokemon and you just want to see the top ice attackers in the game, you guys can check in the scroll bar of this video and skip to whichever part you'd like. So Mega Glalie is an all ice type Pokemon. It is going to max out at 3651. So it is not over 4,000. It is not one of the top CP Pokemon by far in the game. However, that doesn't mean it can't be an effective Pokemon. It has an attack value of 252, a defense of 168, and a stamina of 190. So its prevailing most powerful stat is going to be in the attack category. This Pokemon also will be weak to four things, which is going to be Steel, Rock, Fire, and Fighting. And it only has one resistance, which is going to be Ice. And that also goes for all these straight Ice type Pokemon in the game. Unfortunately, four weaknesses, one resistance. So Ice typing is best if it is paired with something that will help it retract some of its weaknesses or even if it maintains the same it adds a bunch of other resistances or cancel some of them out because that would be the best case scenario that we do have for the ice type counters I mean they only really resist itself and how often are you fighting an ice type versus an ice type and as far as this Pokemon's moveset goes it gets ice shard and frost breath frost breath being one of the more premier movesets however powder snow has been one of them that has taken over the spot and is on some of the top ice attackers in the game and this Pokemon is going to get for charge moves Avalanche, Shadow Ball, and Gyro Ball. So fortunately for this Pokemon, Avalanche is one of the top recommended movesets for these Pokemon in Pokemon Go. But we will see with its stats, everything included, will it be able to take over the top spot in Pokemon Go? Because now we are going to look at the top ice attackers in the game. What are going to be my recommendations to go after, to power up, and budget counters? Technically speaking, Mega Glalie, as well as Omega Bombasnow, that are the two ice type Pokemon that we do have Megas in the game, fortunately for us, are going to be budget Pokemon. Meaning, you do not have to raid for these Pokemon in order to get their XL candy. They are going to be spawning in the wild, Snow Runt being spawning during this event. We also have Obama Snow coming from Snover, which is going to be spawning in the event and in other events as well in the future. So we do not have to worry about raiding and paying to get the Axel Candy if we do decide to use this Pokemon as one of our counters as raid bosses in Pokemon Go. The top number one recommended moveset is going to be Frost Breath and Avalanche 37.18, Ice Shard and Avalanche at 36.64, Frost Breath Shadow Ball 3404, Ice Shard Shadow Ball 3335, and then we have the Gyro Ball at 28. 62. So when we are looking at these Pokemon, the ER values are something we're still getting a little bit more familiar with. However, 37, pretty good. Not the best that I've seen, especially not the best in other categories, but it does get Shadow Ball, which is a pretty cool moveset. So if you do decide to go after this Pokemon, power it up, use it. You might as well unlock a Shadow Ball as a second charge move because it does not get any other types of quick moves. So it's all you do need is Frost Breath combined with Avalanche and Shadow Ball, and you have a pretty good souped up Pokemon here. Man, I wish that there was a Mega for its counterpart, which is going to be the Frostlass. I think that would be such a cool Mega, being a Ghost and a Ice-type Pokemon. Unfortunately, there is none. So now, the long await is over. Let's check out the top Ice-type Pokemon in Pokemon Go for meta attacker purposes. Starting at the top, we have a Pokemon that is not out yet, but is the Galarian Darmaniton. I know you're like, well, it is out, but it's not because it is the Zen Mode. Ice Fang, Avalanche combination at 46.38. That is going to be the top stat we're going to compare to, which you already have seen the Mega Glalie, but we're going to see it again here in a second. Then in spot number two, we have Shadow Mamoswine at 43.16 with Powder Snow and Avalanche. Shadow Weavile with Ice Shard and Avalanche at 39.39. Galarian Darmanitan at Ice Fang and Avalanche at 37.87, which is approximately 10 points in the ER value below its Zen Mode counterpart. Then the Mega Glalie makes its way into Pokemon Go right here with Frost Breath and Avalanche at 37.18, which is virtually the same as the Galarian Darmanitan. Mamoswine with 37.07. Mega Obama Snow coming in next at 36.64. Glacier 
Lucian actually there at 34.42, and then Weavile and Shadow Articuno at the bottom at Frost Breath, Ice Beam at 33.01. Then if we go to the next page, we do have Avalug in here, Ice Fang and Avalanche. You did see that Pokemon ranked in the top 100 for the Master League, 31.82. Shadow Pilo Swine, which obviously is a subpar version of the Mammal Swine. Shadow Cloyster, Obama Snow, Shadow Walrin. Then we have Jinx, Aurorus, Shadow Lapras, Bear Tick, Sneasel. And then if you want to go to the next page, you actually see the Articuno down there in the 23rd spot in Pokemon Go with Frost, Breath, and Blizzard at 28.74. Then we have the Regice in there, the Cloyster, the Walrin, Pilo Swine, Obama Snow, and Down. All right, so what is it to do with this Pokemon? Honestly speaking, it is the top Mega in the game, which is good. If you are using Megas to go after Meta Raids, right? Let's say a Dragon Pokemon comes out and those Dragon Pokemon are gonna be double weak to Ice. You may consider using an Ice type Mega to be able to go after this to get the bonus and the boost of all these Pokemon that are gonna be also playing. However, I would not recommend that everybody in the party does use a Mega Glalie, but at the same time, at least one person per spot, meaning in spot number one of your raid party, somebody should be using one. Spot number two, another person should be using one. And spot number three, another person. It shouldn't really go beyond three slots if you guys are really strong in your counters, but if you're going after a really low amount of players, you might wanna go even further than that. But would I recommend powering this Pokemon up? Let's see here. Obviously, we have Shadow Mamoswine, that's gonna be better. We also have the Galarian Darmanitan that is better as well. However, what I've noticed, because I do have one all the way at level 40, is it is very glassy, meaning it pretty much dies to any special that comes at it. So that is one unfortunate part about using this Pokemon. However, we also have the Shadow Mamoswine, which I do not have one powered up. I never really got a good enough EIV one that I really wanted to invest in, but I've also heard from Michelle and other people, Michelle does have a 100% IV Shadow Mamoswine, which is insane. This Pokemon is also extremely glassy in Pokemon Go, so unfortunately, some of these top ice type Pokemon are very glassy in the game. The one Pokemon I would for surely stay away from is gonna be the Shadow Weavile. Reason being is that Pokemon is gonna be the glassiest of all of them for certain. But obviously, we need ice type counters and things like that, so what would I do with this Pokemon? Honestly, I would probably still power this Pokemon up. Hopefully, you can catch enough of them, you can trade them, you can get a Lucky of them, and then you can power up that said Lucky to be able to save some Stardust and resources. So that is my recommendation here. Would I max multiple them? Obviously not. If I were to go after a Mega XL Candy Ice type Pokemon, I'm going after the Obama Snow. I'd rather you have two or three of those Pokemon to Mega Level 3 so that you can get multiple of them whenever you want because they share a dual typing, and dual typings are the most efficient way to capitalize on gaining XL Candy in Pokemon Go because you can use the Mega Obama Snow for a Bulbasaur Calm Day, and then you can turn around and use the exact same Pokemon for this event of the holiday season. So one Mega Glalie, max out to level 40 for sure. Level 50, maybe if you have the additional resources, I'm looking at at least 10 to 15 to 20 million XP because there's going to be future Pokemon in the ice category that are definitely going to be worth your time, energy, and resources. And we didn't see one in this that was too incredibly strong, but I wanna check out Shadow Ball and then I'm gonna give you something that's coming in the future. Unfortunately, it does not have a quick move that is going to be ice, so it's gonna have to be discovered in a different category. And I did tweet about it the other day. Let me know in the comments below before we get to it if you guys know what it is. Obviously, the strongest Pokemon in the game with the Shadow Ball are gonna be Mega Mewtwo Y and X. 56, 54, Mega Gengar coming in next at 32, and then we can go down the list with Mega Alakazam right there with Shadow Ball at 48. However, if we do wanna see where this Pokemon is going to stack up in this category, guys, it is unfortunately quite far down there. It's gonna be on the fourth page in the 42nd spot at 34.03. Okay, so now let's change over to the top ice attackers in the game. Let's check it out. So, we cannot overlook Mega Mewtwo Y, Mega Mewtwo X, that are going to be getting Ice Beam when they do come out. They are not out yet, but 51.13 for the Mega Mewtwo Y and 49.5 for the Mega Mewtwo X. But the Pokemon I am very interested in is going to be the Black Curum and the White Curum. So Black Curum with Dragon Tail and Blizzard at 47.74 is above the Galarian Darmanitan at 46.38. And then the White Curum comes not too far behind at 45.93. Then we have the Primal Kyogre making its way in there as well with the Blizzard at 45.59 that we should not look over. Okay, so that totally changes the ice type category. Unfortunately, some of these Pokemon are not getting dual stab bonuses, but something like the Mega Mewtwo will charge that ice beam so fast, and since it hits so hard, it's definitely going to always be one of the top recommended ice type counters in the game, which is insane to think about. And then also, that black and white Curum are extremely strong. Black is above the Galarian Zen Mode Darmanitan. However, it is going to be not dual stab bonus with the ice moves as of right now. That Pokemon stats could change, the move sets could change, and we could see something different coming from that Pokemon. But as of right now, that's going to be where it sits. So Mega Glalie right now is going to be and is for the future the top Mega in the game for the ice category, which is very effective. And not only that, guys, max out one. Why not? Get it to level 40, play with that Pokemon, see how you like it before you get it to level 50, just to see.
see because level 40 to level 50, although it is a lot of premium resources, honestly speaking, when I fight with these Pokemon, I don't see a dramatic change in these Pokemon. So try it out before you get to level 50 and only level 50 that Pokemon if you guys do have enough resources, as always. So thank you guys for being here, as always. To all my likers, commenters, subscribers, Patreon members, everybody takes your support, subscription, and it's page to the next level. See you guys out on the next video. Peace. I want to take this time to thank everybody who supports me in every facet. It means the world to me and an extra special thank you to all my Patreons. I greatly appreciate the extra support to continue to allow me to pursue Pokemon Go full time, allowing me to create my daily video uploads in the most timely fashion for everyone's benefit. Plus, I get the amazing experience of sharing my creative processes behind the scenes and raiding all around the globe with select upper tiers. Thank you everybody for being a part of the Trainer Club. You all mean the absolute world to me, and I will see you guys out on the next video.